Is the Sony A80J the sweet spot for OLEDs in 2021? And what is missing from the A90J? Let's find out. What's up, I'm B the Installer, and I'm deeply interested to find out if the Sony A80J OLED TV with the new XR processor can give us the same great picture, sound, and gaming as the Sony A90J, all while keeping us from having to spend over $1,000 more for this top OLED. I'm gonna go over the look and the features of this A80J, showing some of the differences from the A90J, as well as how it compares to the LG G1 Gallery OLED that I just happen to have it mounted above the A80J. So a lot of good stuff here, and at the end I'll draw some lines and help you decide if you should buy the Sony A80J. Make sure to smash the like button when you get a chance. A lot of good comparison videos coming up, and definitely subscribe to the channel and set the bell to all so you know when I upload a new video or when I go live. We've been doing a lot of Wednesday live streams, and if you really need questions answered, it's a great opportunity to talk to myself and FOMO, Techno Dad, and see what TV you should buy. So make sure to subscribe and set the bell to all. So Sony released two different OLEDs for 2021, the Sony A90J and this Sony A80J. Now, the Sony A90J is pretty solid and likely the best OLED or even the best TV of 2021. So where does the Sony A80J fit in? Let's see how solid the A80J is by unboxing it. Oh, whoops. Well, I hope the Sony A80J is well built because it was not what I had in mind to test the strength of the Sony OLEDs. The good news is my camera gear and the tools and the feet of the TV were all perfectly placed so the TV landed squarely on the carpet and I was saved. Definitely not my best performance when unboxing a TV. So about those feet that it barely missed, they're actually quite nice. They're very similar to the older Sony A8H where you just slide them right in and they sort of lock in place. You can also remove and reassemble the feet in a couple different positions, which gives you the ability to raise them up for a sound bar or have them narrow or further apart. So basically four options. The A90J feet are actually as wide as the TV, so you have to have a wider table. And then from there, you can raise them off up that low profile look. The A80J continues to follow the older look of Sony OLEDs that I actually prefer by having the same nice metal edge to the panel for added protection. And then a nice square look to the back of the TV, which has a slightly more premium feel to the plastic than the A90J. I really like the design and feel of the TV, and it's a bit strange that this TV with the new brighter panel has vents around the backing even though it does not have the added heat sink, which allows Sony to push the A90J harder, which makes it hotter and yet it has no vents. So these two Sony OLED TVs have a completely different design to them on the outside, but they do have some similarities. One is the A80J has four HDMI ports, two of them are HDMI 2.1, but one of those is actually the eARC port. And as of this review, Sony has yet to roll out VRR. So basically it gives you two gaming ports with the 4K at 120 frames per second, but if you have to connect your TV to a soundbar or AVR, then you just have one additional HDMI port. The last external difference from the A90J is a big one. It's definitely the reason that the A90J is over $1,000 more than the A80J, and that's the metal backlit TV remote. Of course I'm kidding, but that backlit remote does come in handy when watching TV in the dark, so it's a bit of a bummer the A80J doesn't get that remote. All the buttons are the same, and I'm sure if you really wanted one, Sony would be happy to sell you one of the metal backlit remotes. In fact, I found a site selling it, and people with other Sony TVs are already buying it, so check out the links below. So let's get this TV on and see how it looks, and then help you decide if the Sony A80J is something you should consider. As I sat down in front of the TV, and it was loading the OS, I noticed another difference between this A80J and I think pretty much any OLED I've seen before. The screen was not the typical black mirror with the great anti-reflective properties. It actually had more of a matte finish. So it doesn't knock down reflections quite as good as the A90J or even any of the older TVs like the A8H or A9G. I'm interested in how someone that's had an OLED in the past would feel about this change. If it's your first, it's probably not a big deal. Let me know what you think about this anti-reflective coating being more of a matte finish. In 2021, Sony TVs are putting out the new Google TV. This is basically Android TV with a new search and organizational side to the OS. 
So you still log in through your Google account and the OS will populate content you have across different devices. And you can add other Google accounts to the TV, but you'll only see the content and recommendations based on the main profile. So for example, I have many apps under my name and Google profile, but because my wife has the Disney Plus account, every time I go into that app, it tries her email and it looks like it's a success, but then it fails and I have to re-enter all the info. I'm sure that can all be worked out, but having the one profile may mean that recommendations are based on that person's info and not the entire household. So I got it on into the Spectrum app because I wanted to see how the upscaling and motion was, as well as just how good it looks and sounds in general compared to these other OLEDs. First, the upscaling on Sony TVs is typically good and the A80J is no different. It looks great on sports or movies. Motion is smooth with minimal changes out of the box. I did notice the color had a bit of a green tint to it. And someone had commented about the same thing in my A90J versus C1 video that it also looked green. In that video, there was a bit of a mismatch in the color temperature on a specific spot. But here on Expert 1 or 2, the picture is slightly off when comparing it to the LG G1 above. Now, since the LG G1 is there, I'll quickly say that the G1 and the A80J are very close in brightness. The G1 may have a more relaxed ABL, allowing the full screen to get a bit brighter, but I don't know if anyone would notice this without the TV sitting above. The motion and definition on the A80J looks slightly better than on the LG C1 on top, so a little early for a full rundown on these two, but the A80J is looking pretty much as good as the best LG OLED in 2021. Not bad. Besides the motion and processing, I didn't notice the XR processor doing a whole lot of work on the highlights in SDR, but the HDR was a bit different. First of all, the A80J looks great in HDR. Standing alone, it looks brighter than the Sony A9G or A8H, and it retains a ton of detail. The biggest differences are in the skin tones, making people look more realistic, where traditionally faces can look a little gray on an OLED versus a brighter QLED. So both Sony OLEDs are making skin tones look more natural, and on top of that improvement, the XR processor was definitely brightening up some detail that I didn't expect. And the only real way to see that is by comparing it to something without the XR processor, like the LG G1, which just happens to be above the A80J. Set to similar modes, which was Dolby Vision Bright on the A80J versus Dolby Vision Cinema Home on the LG, the TVs look very similar for the most part. But in some scenes, you can see small highlights look better on the A80J, and I think that's due to the XR processor. And this was with the tone mapping off and the gamma set to negative two setting that Sony recommends. But Sony has options to tweak Dolby Vision here that you can't really get on the LG. So if you wanted to get a bit more pop out of the Sony, you can increase the midtones and change the HDR tone mapping to brightness preferred. But when doing that, I lost some of the contrast and detail in the highlights. And if you set the tone mapping to gradation preferred, it can crush some of the shadow detail. So I prefer just leaving that off and have peak luminance set to high on Dolby Vision Bright. I think that provides a great HDR look to the A80J that is very similar, if not better, than the LG G1. Before I get to what really separates this A80J from the competition, I will say that a lot of people commented that they wish Sony had an HDMI 2.1 enabled OLED in 2020. It was disappointing that the PS5 rolled out with just the X900H having some HDMI 2.1 features. Now both OLEDs and the X95J, all highly anticipated TVs, will all have two HDMI 2.1 ports running 4K at 120, and Sony's promising VRR later in the year. I'm not a hardcore gamer, but the picture quality in game mode looks fantastic. So for me, it's just fine. The Sony TVs don't have the separate game optimizer that both LG and Samsung have this year, and the A80J and A90J both have a bit more lag than their Samsung and LG flagship counterparts. So I feel like it would be hard to recommend the Sony A80J just because it would be like the best gaming TV in the world. But anyone splitting time like 50-50 or better with movies and sports versus gaming would probably make do with the addition of the HDMI 2.1 and wait for the VRR. So most people probably expected this TV to be great and I can say it's definitely not a flop. But is it close enough to the A90J to avoid that added cost? Is it better than the LG C1 or even the G1? Of course, I'll be making some comparison videos like the LG G1 versus the Sony A90J and then this Sony A80J versus the LG C1, and a couple videos with all four OLEDs. But for now, let me quickly separate the A90J and A80J and then finish up with some buying info. So both Sony OLEDs have some of the same new features. 
And one major similarity is the XR processor that I was speaking about. And where I really think it helps is in small areas, pumping light to brighten up what can sometimes be a lackluster OLED highlight. So that's a great benefit to both of these panels. And speaking of both panels, both TVs are supposed to have the new OLED panel, even though it's not considered the Evo panel, which is an LG term. But all these panels come from LG display. And there's been a lot of chatter about maybe OLED panels having some banding or the screen door effect that could be due to a lack of quality control. And even my first A90J Master Series OLED had this, but the second one didn't. Neither of those TVs had this pink tint that I saw on the G1, but this Sony A80J looked fairly clean, a little bit of vertical banding, and it did have a bit of the pink tint from the angle similar to the LG G1 above. And I do get a bit picky with quality control when I'm talking about blooming and the DSE tests on LED TVs, but these issues are much more subtle and don't show in bright scenes when panning nearly as much as the DSC on an LED TV does. And I'm not just looking at what's coming from these panels either. Both Sony OLEDs have speakers that vibrate the screen and send robust sound out into the audience with small subs in the back. Now the A90J has a total of 60 watts of power and the A80J has half that with 30 watts. Both sound good, but the A90J definitely has the best sound in a TV in 2021 and maybe ever. If you have a soundbar or receiver, this probably doesn't matter, but I could enjoy either of these TVs with their internal speakers. So if I stop here, and maybe I should for the sake of the A80J, it seems like only a fool would pay $1,000 or more for the Sony A90J. But let's just see what you would be missing on the A80J and see if you can live without it. So the Sony A80J, doesn't have the heat sink in the panel, which is meant to disperse the heat created when watching TV. So we know the A90J can be pushed harder, or why would Sony even go through the motions on building that in? The small intense highlights on the A90J, they're very noticeable versus any other OLED. In addition, the A90J is a master series OLED. So Sony spends the time to calibrate these TVs before they're boxed up and shipped out. And I've heard multiple people say that the new OLEDs seem to be more accurate out of the box, but this A80J looks a little off, a bit green around the gills, and I'll follow up with that in my comparison videos when they're all calibrated. And the third difference is the anti-reflective coating on the two TVs. Now, the A90J is superb. It has a traditional mirror-like finish that was really good at suppressing light, but the lack of brightness in OLED TVs was what made the reflections more noticeable. And now both of these TVs are brighter, so even with a window behind me in my bedroom, I hardly notice that light in the A90J. But the A80J with the matte finish is not as effective as suppressing the light. And it's a bit surprising that Sony changed the OLED in this manner. I'd be interested in finding out why they did that if anyone knows. In your average room or theater room, Probably not something you'd notice or care about. And then there are two minor features on the back of the A90J that are missing from the A80J. One is the microphone switch that you can toggle to have hands-free voice activation for your favorite voice assistant. That annoying feature is only available on the A90J. I'm kidding, but in all honesty, having TVs and audio devices that can pick up those commands normally interrupt what you're watching and listening to more often than they're useful. So just buy a $20 Echo Dot. And the other thing is the ability for the A90J to act as a dedicated center channel, while the A80J does not have that input. But would you use your TV as a center channel? I wonder how it sounds versus an average speaker. I'll have to give it a whirl. But both of these items are missing on the A80J. And last but not least on the differences is that remote. I've already spoken about it, but if you're in the dark, I'd highly recommend that backlit remote for any Sony TV. It's pretty nice and I hope more TV companies catch on to the backlit remote. So the A80J is a pretty interesting TV for 2021, but should you buy it? It's definitely giving the LG G1 and C1 a run for their money. Looking at the price of all four OLEDs now, the A90J is definitely the toughest to process and the 65 inch A80J is $1,300 less than the A90J. Without the Master Series tag and calibration, the A80J still looks great. Though it's missing a touch of HDR brightness that Sony can push to that A90J with the added heatsink. The matte finish and the speakers at half power are only gonna affect some buyers, while the product as a whole is much improved over the older Sony OLEDs, including the addition of HDMI 2.1 ports. So many of you can benefit by getting the really nice Sony OLED while saving a good amount of money versus the A90J. And comparing it to the LG C1 or G1, I don't think it's gonna be as good of a gaming TV since it only has two HDMI 2.1 ports and no functioning VRR. 
but the XR processor is superior for upscaling and motion, as well as providing a little more oomph in scenes and highlights over the LG products. The LG G1 is also wall mount only out of the box, which I found to be a bit annoying and maybe more than some people are willing to bargain for. Since they're similar in quality and built a little different, you'll have to make that decision to spend the extra money on the G1 and have a wall mount or possibly buy the feet to put on the stand or save some cash on the Sony A80J and maybe even buy that backlit remote. And then that leaves us with the LG C1 which has definitely impressed me along with this A80J. I'll have a lot more to say about this, but with the prices being equal, isn't it normally LG for gaming and Sony for a majority of TV and movie watching? So I'm impressed with the Sony A80J. Definitely a pretty good looking TV compared to almost any other competition, especially since it's the second best Sony OLED of 2021. It could still very well be the second best TV in the US and the best TV buy of the year. Let me know what you think. Does the matte screen throw you off or is that just me? And the speakers being less than or no heat sink or the plain remote, which feature do you wish it had most? Let me know in the comments. Definitely smash the like button, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, and then watch one of the install videos so you can be the installer.